There are three greenhouse gases that are most mentioned when discussing agriculture and climate change. These are carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. Carbon dioxide is the gas that most people talk about and it makes up more than 80% of greenhouse gases emitted as a result of human activities. However, carbon dioxide is a distant third place when discussing greenhouse gases important to agriculture. The two gases that farmers and ranchers should be aware of are methane and nitrous oxide. Methane is especially associated with livestock. More than one-fourth of the total methane resulting from human activities is from animal agriculture. Nitrous oxide is a major emission, especially from agricultural soil management, or you can think of it as cropping systems. These emissions largely result from fertilizer and, to a lesser extent, manure storage and application on cropland. When talking about potential impacts, not all greenhouse gases are created equal. To compare them, scientists have developed a measurement that standardizes the global warming potential of a gas relative to carbon dioxide. In this scale, carbon dioxide is a relative score of 1 because it is being compared to itself. A pound of methane has 21 times the impact of a pound of carbon dioxide. Nitrous oxide has a global warming potential of 310. This means that a pound of nitrous oxide has the same impact as releasing 310 pounds of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The largest source of agricultural nitrous oxide is by far agricultural soil management. Soil management refers to fertilizer applications and cropping activities like tillage, planting, or other actions that directly disturb soil. It does not include land use changes such as converting pastures to cropland or vice versa. Nitrous oxide is very potent, over 300 times more powerful than carbon dioxide at trapping heat in the atmosphere. This means that even small amounts of nitrous oxide emissions are a big concern for climate change. The next largest agricultural source of nitrous oxide is manure management. Nitrous oxide is released in small quantities from manure storage structures. Field burning of ag residues is measurable and included in EPA's annual greenhouse gas inventory but is an extremely minor source of emissions. The most significant greenhouse gas emitted from animal agriculture is methane. Most of this agricultural methane comes from digestion of feed by ruminant animals such as beef or dairy cattle, sheep or goats. After an animal consumes feed, the natural process of fermentation by microbes in the rumen or gut produces methane. This methane is released to the atmosphere when animals belch and emit gases in other ways. Enteric fermentation is estimated to be 71% of all agricultural methane emissions and 20% of all methane produced as a result of human activities. Some methane is produced by pigs or chickens, but this is a very small fraction of the amount produced by ruminant animals. Manure management is also a greenhouse gas, mostly methane source. Manure is responsible for about 25% of agricultural methane emissions and 7% of the total methane from human activities. The term manure management refers to the practice of collecting and storing manure in a contained area until conditions are right for land application. As the manure in these storage structures decomposes under anaerobic or without oxygen conditions, it releases methane. Unless the structure is enclosed with an engineered cover, this methane escapes to the atmosphere. This is especially true of livestock systems that use liquid or slurry manure structures, which are usually swine and dairy operations. The next two, much smaller sources of methane from agriculture are rice cultivation, which is about a little under 4% of ag methane emissions, and field burning of ag residues. Field burning of ag residues is one-tenth of one percent of ag methane emissions. When compared to other sources of ag emissions, the use of fuels and electricity on farms is a small piece of the greenhouse gas emissions. One exception to this is on poultry farms. Since poultry production generally uses solid or dry manure systems, which emit less methane than liquid systems, 
and chickens do not emit much methane from enteric fermentation, Fuel and electricity are responsible for the majority of greenhouse gases on poultry farms. And the source for that is the University of Georgia study. When you take these different sources of greenhouse gases and put them all together, you can calculate the total amount of greenhouse gases, not just carbon dioxide, but also methane, nitrous oxide, and the others emitted by one particular entity, and this is called a carbon footprint. You can look at it from several different angles. This carbon footprint is the total amount of greenhouse gases that are emitted into the atmosphere each year by a person, family, a building, organization, company, or some type of process. This includes direct emissions as well as indirect ones. And this footprint accumulates throughout each stage of the production process. A direct emission is a gas that is produced as a direct result of your own activities. On a livestock farm, some direct emissions would include the methane emitted by the animals themselves or by the manure storage. It would also include fuel burned in tractors or a feed truck. Heating or cooling a building for animal comfort would create some greenhouse gas emissions. Some indirect emissions would be those released while raising corn or other feeds, the emissions from manufacturing tractors, combines, and planters, or fencing materials. The way that you calculate a carbon footprint is by doing a life cycle analysis, or an LCA. This is a way to carefully outline what is included in the carbon footprint and what is not. Different organizations have published standards that can be used when conducting an LCA. When using the same LCA process, when comparing your own carbon footprint over time, or comparing to another company who also uses the same LCA, you can have a pretty high degree of confidence that those results or those comparisons are valid. So when you read news articles or see product claims, it's important to find out if the comparisons are made using apples and apples. One example of this is the 2006 report from the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization called Livestock's Long Shadow. This report compared worldwide emissions sources and concluded that livestock were responsible for 18% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions, even more than transportation. After analyzing the report, a University of California scientist found that the numbers used for livestock included a complete life cycle analysis, but that the transport numbers only included direct emissions from burning fuels. The idea that livestock generate more greenhouse gases has and continues to receive a great deal of attention in the media and is still frequently quoted by many people. If more care had been taken to ensure the comparison was done using truly comparable numbers, much negative publicity for animal agriculture could have been avoided.